Hello and welcome back to Dr. Doctor. Today we look at five mental health conditions that you've probably never heard of and never even knew existed. These are real conditions that affect real people. Following from the previous video on postnatal depression, we start first by looking at the most serious mental health condition associated with childbirth, a condition known as puerperal psychosis or postpartum psychosis. This is a rare condition which usually happens quite soon after delivery of a child. It is characterised by clouding of consciousness, delusional beliefs and hallucinations. These delusions are often paranoid and centred around the newborn child. For example, the mother may have a strong belief that the child is the devil or that this world is too evil for the child to live in. These beliefs are unshakable and fixed. This leads to a significant risk to the child and there have been many cases where this condition has led the mother to injure and even murder the child. The risk of developing this illness is higher if you suffer with bipolar, have a history or a family history of psychotic illnesses such as schizophrenia. Treatment involves admission to hospital and this is preferably with both the mother and the child together. In this setting the relationship between the mother and the baby can be preserved whilst minimising the risk to the child. The next condition we talk about is actually a group of conditions known as culture specific syndromes. Syndromes are a combination of symptoms and in this case they're caused by a psychiatric condition. These conditions are recognised as a disease within a specific society or culture and hence the name culture specific syndromes. These diseases have no known biochemical or physiological cause but they are recognised and treated commonly by the folk medicine in the society where it is present. These illnesses still remain very mysterious and poorly understood and yet often have centuries worth of documented cases. Let's look at some examples. The first, running amok. This is defined as an episode of sudden mass assault against people or objects, usually by a single individual following a period of brooding. Now this is specific to the Malay Indonesian culture and the word amok originates from the word meng amok, which roughly translates to to make a furious, desperate charge. In a typical case, an individual, often male, having shown no previous signs of anger or violence, will acquire a weapon and, in a sudden frenzy, will attempt to kill or injure anyone he encounters, and even himself. If the individual survives, he will often have no memory of the events that just passed. Our second example is Taijin Kyofusho. This is another example which is specific to the Japanese culture. This translates into the disorder of fear of interpersonal relations. Those suffering with this disease are extremely embarrassed of themselves and are fearful of displeasing others when it comes to the functions or appearance of their body. They have specific fears of embarrassing others with their mere presence. It is quite similar to social phobia based on fears and anxiety. Our final example of a culture-bound syndrome is Piblocto. This is documented to be common amongst all Arctic regions and was first documented in the 1800s. It is said to be an abrupt dissociative episode whereby an individual, often female, experiences sudden social withdrawal. This is then followed by a sudden change in behaviour where they may rip their clothes off, scream uncontrollably, eat excrement or exhibit violent behaviour. In some cases the individual may then develop seizures or even lose consciousness. Following a rapid resolution of the symptoms there is no recollection of the events. A hundred years after the first documented case we are still no closer to understanding this condition and some researchers even dispute its very existence. The third condition we cover today is catatonic schizophrenia. 
which is one of the many subtypes of schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a condition which affects the way you think. It can make you experience things that are not real, what we call hallucinations, and can make you believe unusual things, what we call delusions. Catatonic schizophrenia refers to the additional disturbance of a person's movement. This can be a dramatic reduction in activity to the point where all voluntary movement stops. This is known as a catatonic stupor, or alternatively all movements can dramatically increase, known as catatonic excitement. There are additional disturbances of movements that can also be present, such as posturing, this is voluntary assumption and maintenance of bizarre or inappropriate postures, negativism, this is where the patient will do the exact opposite of what is asked of them, echopraxia, this is where they will imitate another person's movements, and echolalia, this is where they will repeat the words exactly of another person. Keep in mind that catatonia alone can have a variety of causes and not only schizophrenia. This includes brain disease, metabolic disturbances, alcohol and even drugs, and can sometimes be seen in severe forms of depression. Cyclothymia is the fourth condition that we look at today. This is essentially a mild form of bipolar affective disorder. A person with cyclothymia will have a history of mood swings that range from mild depression to mild emotional highs. You may have periods of low mood, quickly followed by periods of euphoria and excitement when you don't need much sleep, for example. The periods of low mood don't last long enough and aren't severe enough to merit a diagnosis of clinical depression, but they will still probably interfere with your ability to function on a day-to-day -day basis. Mood swings will be fairly frequent and persistent, and you'll have no more than two symptom-free months in a row. Fluctuating moods need to have lasted at least two years for cyclothymia to be diagnosed. Finally, we look at morbid jealousy, also known as Othello syndrome, with reference to the irrational jealousy of Shakespeare's Othello. Morbid jealousy describes a range of irrational thoughts and emotions together with associated unacceptable or extreme behaviours, in which the dominant theme is a preoccupation with their partner's sexual unfaithfulness based on unfounded evidence. Interestingly, in Mooney's 1965 case series, 14% of those with morbid jealousy were considered to have made homicidal attempts against their partner. In situations where the partner strongly denies infidelity, this can provoke extreme anger and violence. Alternatively, the long-suffering partner, plagued by repeated cross-examination and accusations, may yield and give a false confession, and this too can provoke a violent rage in the jealous individual. In this condition, risk management is key, and often this includes hospital admission of the morbidly jealous individual and also steps need to be taken to protect the potential victims, the partners. So there we have five mental health conditions that you probably never knew existed. Have a look in the description box down below for some interesting links on these conditions. There's lots more interesting content on its way so please do subscribe. Leave a like and some feedback in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.